welcome to day one of my quarantine and the new reality of pandemics and whatever is else coming down the pike for us in this age of transition, whatever it may be. Uh, and I find myself wanting to share some things just in case I I am uh, not here tomorrow or the next day or the next day thinking about making a friend of death as uh, Don Juan said in the books of Carlos Castaneda. And what that means for me is recognizing your mortality and that this moment is really the only moment we have for sure. So to live it fully and completely. So there's a couple things I want to share. <laughs> ah, first one is uh, I near-death experience I had, uh, or out-of-body near-death altered state experience I had uh, a few months ago. Um, it was precipitated by, I believe, I was volunteering in four different communities that had different kind of paradigms and community fields. And each of them was very different, and I was ping-ponging between these community fields. I was exhausting myself, not sleeping a lot. Uh, so I had, you know, some precursors here. Uh, anyways, so I was feeling really, really exhausted and just drained and uh, I passed out basically um, and I had a vision and it didn't feel like a dream it felt real uh, and I was floating in a the closest thing I could describe as an ocean. Um, it, I don't know if you've been to a aquarium that has like a huge tank, like several stories tall. I'm, I'm thinking of the one at uh, Monterey uh, in California. It's like three, four stories, and you could like, you just, the fish are like at different levels and swimming around, and the lights coming through. And that was, it felt like that, but it wasn't water. It was, I don't know, something else. Um, and there was these billions of balls of light glowing. And they were um, at different levels of this oceanic field of beingness, is the best way I could describe it. And some were very static, some were moving slowly, some were hopping all over the place, some were stuck at a level, some was was heading up, some were heading down. The ones that headed down, the further down they went, the, the denser the balls of light became. And towards the bottom, it looked like they were actually becoming physicalized into something. Um, and as as they went towards the top or above, they got lighter and brighter as they went. And the top had a bright light, and the balls that reached the top, they dissolved into that light. And the bottom had like a pit of darkness. And several balls turned dark and went into that darkness. And... I found myself floating in the middle of all this, and it really felt like, best way I could describe it is what Ken Wilber talks about as the involutionary and evolutionary arc. So it's like, it's like feeling like the 
the field that I was in was like humanity and we were one entity. We were cells inside of this one being. And some of us were heading down involutionary through the stages and some of us were evolving upwards. Some of us were spiraling between some up and down all over the place. And it was, this, and it also felt like what a lot of people have been talking about, including Elon Musk, that there's good odds that this reality we're in is a simulation. Well, this felt more like a organic simulation. Like we are this collective being that has decided to create a game inside of our own cells and different aspects of us, different cells of our being are experiencing different worlds and different realities and different lives and different and different stages of development. So it's like all inside of this collective self. And really kind of suddenly hit me how this really fit in with a lot of the mystical traditions. Uh, in Kabbalah, for example, it's very, very similar to the idea in Kabbalah of the tree of life or the Jacob's ladder. And so it, it was almost like I was in the middle of Jacob's ladder where we climb up to heaven or come down to earth or lower. <laughs> so, I mean, and in every tradition, there is some angle on this that fits. And so I was really kind of thinking about this some more. And it's, I've, I mean, in some of the mystical traditions, they talk about uh, the uh, 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 Messiah. And in Kabbalah, we talk about, they talk about it in terms of the original Hebrew interpretation from the Old Testament, where the term actually was first used. Um, and there are some Kabbalists who believe that the Messiah is not a person. It's not going to be a person. The Messiah is the state of consciousness. That state of consciousness is an awakening to our collective self, to our one self. And from that perspective, we could kind of project um, that someone like Jesus or the Bodhisattva or, or of a bodhisattva like Buddha and all that, um, they are tapping in to that collective self. And if, if we look at the words of Jesus and think about what if he's just speaking from our collective self? It's very interesting. It changes the whole thing. So anyways, so that was my experience. I woke up. It really felt like I had died. Um, now I had a real near death experience back in the back in my late twenties, early thirties. A real one. And I basically lost consciousness, lost my heartbeat, everything. Um, and rose up above my body and I felt a profound presence of love and care behind me. I couldn't see anything. I was just floating, looking at my life and everything. And, and everything kind of shattered that I was thinking about in this world. And I suddenly felt that, like, best way to describe it, even though it's beyond words, I can only come close, come a little bit, maybe a little close, that it was what we talk about as unconditional love, but exponentially beyond what we can conceive what that feels like or what that is. And when I had this other experience more recently, I had that same feeling when I looked up at the top where the light was and where everyone was going. I felt that signature. I felt that 
energy signature that I felt the last time I had a near-death experience. Uh, so it wasn't a dream. It, you know, I was literally laying in bed, and I felt really sick. And it was like I just felt like I was losing my consciousness. I didn't feel like I was falling asleep. So who knows what happened? I don't know what happened. Uh, but since then, I can really kind of pop right back into that awareness. It's kind of like became kind of a template in my mind or some kind of connection in my mind. So now I could just shift right there. And like right now, I'm holding that space inside my consciousness that I'm speaking to you from inside this field. And I have no idea if you can feel it or not, but I feel it. So I don't know. Maybe I'm mad. Maybe I'm crazy. I don't know. But it feels real. So I just wanted to share that. Uh, shared it with one or two friends, but who knows? Something happens to me or whatever. And then this new age that we are in, this brave new world we are in, this big evolutionary shift, hopefully, hopefully it's an evolutionary shift and not the beginning of our destruction um, or somewhere in between. Uh, it's probably the most likely somewhere in between the two extremes. But whatever it is and wherever we're supposed to be going and whatever happens to us, I just wanted to say everyone has touched my life in any way. I forgive you anything that has happened between us, and I ask your forgiveness. And if not, it's okay. But that know that I I never meant to hurt anybody, and I don't think any of us really do. Um, so. And if this all is a simulation, we never really hurt each other anyway. We're, you know, this is just in, we were in the matrix, so we are in the matrix right now. Or Maya, as talks about in Hindu, that's what they call the matrix in Hindu, or the simulation as the new way of talking about it is. So. And so this is it. The game is on. It's, it's a lot of suffering going on. And, and I just want uh, whatever I can do to alleviate that suffering, I will try to do. And I hope we can all try to do that. And hopefully we could wake up to our so the Mashiach. There's uh, one other note I want to say. This connects to I was blessed enough to attend a talk with Krishna Murti, who is an Indian, was an Indian mystic um, from India, East India, I guess. Mystic. Um, and for three hours, he never said the word I or me. He was speaking from the we. And after this experience, I understood what was happening. On that day, after he was done, I had an amazing kind of collective experience, like, like, we were all walking back. I think there was like four or five hundred of us in this oak grove in Ojai. And everyone was silent walking out. And then somebody near me said, did you feel that? It was like this, this, this. this. And I was like, yeah. And then someone else said, yeah. Like we were all going, yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. 
we all felt the same thing. So I really do believe that uh, we are this one self. And I know a lot of us don't want to wake up. <laughs> and it just may not be our time. We may have to go through some more collective traumas on our collective evolution before we get there. And I hope and pray that we get there eventually. And I hope and pray that we do it with as little suffering as possible. And uh, so be well, stay safe, ride the waves, pick up.